Hi, I'm Shirley Senarigi, a volunteer with the Door County Civility Project. I'd like to talk to you about constructive criticism, one of the nine tools of civility in the Speak Your Peace program. Speak Your Peace was originally developed by the Duluth Superior Civility Project and the work of PM Forney, a professor at John Hopkins University, and they've graciously shared it with the Door County Civility Project and other civility projects across the nation. This video on constructive criticism can be used independently as a, as a discussion starter with your family, maybe in your workplace, or any organization you belong to. However, because the nine tools are very interrelated, we encourage you to take a look at the videos for all of the nine tools of Speak Your Peace. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about constructive language as well as constructive criticism. Constructive language and criticism means that we offer up constructive comments, suggestions, and feedback to others when we need to give that to them with the, with the purpose of improvement. We're respectful and our intent is really to be helpful Again, improve on something and not humiliate anyone. We address conflict with the intention of resolution. It means that when we disagree with others, we stick to the issues and we don't get into making personal attacks. Constructive criticism also means that we're open to learning from the perspective of others and that we are ourselves open to receiving feedback. We're responsible for sharing our opinions and it's helpful, it's most constructive if they can be valid and well reasoned. And then it's great to share them with others. We focus on being solution oriented. We listen intentionally when we're in disagreement with others to find common ground what is it that we might agree on? And then what possible options might be suggested and discussed that can lead to improvement? Constructive criticism reinforces strengths as well as looks at areas for improvement and makes uh, suggestions for options for improvement. Doesn't just come up with one way but looks at options for improvement. We might highlight even what the potential benefit of each of those options is. Constructive criticism uses words like, I really care about, or I understand that, or something I've noticed is, or this is working well, but this needs to be improved upon. How about trying? Perhaps you might consider. In the future, maybe we could do this so that it means that we acknowledge the opinion of others, even though we might be disagreeing. If we're on the receiving end of constructive criticism, it really can be an opportunity. As an individual, as a board member, as a team member, it can be an opportunity. Can we really listen for understanding when we're receiving constructive criticism and trust that the other person's intent is to help us? Can we pause and breathe and try really hard not to get defensive? so that we really listen to the feedback with an open mind, we might find that that constructive criticism can be personally very helpful to us or to the organization that we're a member of. I'd like to leave you with a couple of parting questions. As a member of a group, when do you speak up to voice your opinion? And when do you let it go? There's a time and place for each. Is there a specific time when you failed to give criticism in a constructive manner? And were there consequences for you and others? How did it affect the relationship? 
And lastly, how might you handle that or a similar situation in the future? Constructive criticism is not easy. It's something we can likely all work on. For more information, visit the Door County Civility Project website at doorcountycivilityproject.org.